Now, we want to integrate this function, which is e to a certain argument, okay, and we are integrating that with respect to k. It okay? goes, goes back to the wave number because k detects the solutions that we're going to use. And as you can see over here, that the argument is written as a sum, and this point there's a k, and this point there's also a k. So, in a way, maybe we can break out the argument by writing e to the power of this, multiply by e to the power of this, and integrate. But that's, again, very difficult because now it's a, it's a product of two transcendental numbers, and the argument contains the variable that we're going to integrate with respect to. But what we can try is that we can try to somehow rewrite this argument over here to maybe a form that we can use to carry out the integration. Now, if we can write it out in that looks similar to one of these two forms, maybe we have a chance. Maybe we have a chance to carry out the integration. So let's see what we get. Now, I'm gonna factor out, like, let's just say I'm gonna factor out a certain um, a squared, okay? The minus a squared divided by four. So what I will have is uh, a squared divided by four, and I'll have a k minus k naught squared, Okay, and I'll plus uh, i k x. Okay, basically I just write the the minus a squared divided by four outside. Now, the is that method okay used very often in all sorts of co college algebra problems. And that's called factoring. Um, sorry, completing the square. And maybe we want to use that to somehow simplify this argument over here. Okay, I refer to the argument because after all, it's the, it's the argument of the transcendental number e. Now, for us to carry out the, the completing the square, we need to write the variables that we are completing the square the same thing. Now, like when you see over here, it's not really the same thing because we've got a k minus k naught and we've got a k. So maybe we will just write a a, um, a squared divided by 4. We'll write a k minus k naught squared. I'll plus a i k x. Sorry, I'll plus a i. But then I will now write i bracket k minus k naught x, okay? And as always, I need to compensate that by adding a i k naught x, okay? Because you can see, I can multiply the i x and the, the k naught. That's actually a term that we don't have to begin with, so I'll plus. So this is what I have. Now, I have a chance of completing the square because I got a k minus k naught and a k minus k naught over there. Now, before I want to do that, let's factor out the a divided by 4, a squared divided by 4, so that, you know, we have the, the squared term by itself. Okay, I will just get a k minus k naught squared, and then I would have to minus a 4x divided by a squared k minus k naught. Okay, obviously for i, sorry, and then a plus i k naught x. Right, because now I can easily see that when I multiply this inside here, the 4 cancels out, the a squared cancels out, and we are left with the original term that we had to begin with. And then now at least I can try to factor out this square, which again is not easy to do. So if I write the a squared, a minus a squared divi uh, divided by 4 on the outside, now, what do I want? Now, the first term is going to be a k minus k naught, right? And then this would multiply by a term over here, and I'll multiply that, that term by 2, and that thing must correspond to this over here. So basically, why don't I divide that by 2? So it'll be a minus, I'll divide that by 2, it'll be a 2xi divided by a squared. And then what I'll do is that I'll close that bracket immediately, and I'll put a square over here like that, okay? Wait a minute first, but later, I will need to square this term and compensate that term by subtracting whatever I get because that isn't in the original terms that we have over here. That would be uh, plus 4x squared divided by a squared. Now since it's a plus, sorry, it's a minus, I need to plus that. Okay? I need to plus a 4x squared divided by a squared and then now I will close this entire bracket and still remember the i kx, uh, k naught, multiplied by x. Now, I want to say this again because look, I need to square this term over here. I need to square this term over here because of the square over there, but I don't have that term to begin with, so I need to minus whatever I get. When I square that, the minus signs cancel out, I got the i. i multiplied by i is a minus. Uh, 2 multiplied by 2 is a 4, so it's a 4x squared divided by a squared, but it's a minus because so because it's a minus and now I need to plus to eliminate that term. This one is okay because now I can see that if I multiply these two together and I multiply by a two, I'll get this imme back immediately. So that is fine. Now we're almost done. Now what I want to do is that I want to bring this constant back inside the bracket, but on top of that I want to bring this 
inside the square bracket because the square bracket is squared to begin with. Now, when I do that, I'll get a minus, all right? I will need to square root whatever this, whatever this thing is. So it's a divided by two. So I'll get an a divided by two, k minus k naught. And then I'll multiply that into this one again. So if it's an a divided by two, I will get an x i divided by a. Okay, so I'll multiply a, a divided by two back inside here. That is what I get. And then later, I want to multiply this back inside there again. So I would close this now, and then I would have a minus. The a squared cancel out the sorry the a squared cancels out okay but the the x sorry the x stays there so does the a but since this is a four yeah i think this is a four we get an a squared at the bottom so the four cancels out i got x squared divided by a squared and i'm plus the i k not x and that i would think is correct yes it's correct over here sorry it's a, it's a a4 over there now what can i say the good thing is that now i notice that this term that is outside the parentheses is not in terms of k. The only term that's in terms of k is the given by that over there. Now, if I were to rewrite that back into the argument that I have over here, I will get this final integral over here like that. Noticing that now, since it's a sum of various terms, I can write that as the product of transcendental numbers to that respective argument. And when I do that, okay, um, I will make a substitution. What's the substitution I want to make? The substitution I want to make is y is equal to a divided by 2 k minus k naught and on top of that I need to minus a 2x uh, sorry a x i divided by a and when I do that I will also notice that dy is equals to a dk divided by 2 our differential quantity that when we want to substitute back inside the original integral we have this term over here like that and when I do that I will ultimately get 1 divided by the square root of a the same constants that we get outside. Now, I can see that this e to the minus x, x squared uh, divided by a squared, and this one over here, e to the min e to the i k now x, are both constants. So I can bring them outside the integral sign, and I was left with integrating this term over here, okay? Minus x divided by a e minus um, i k not minus x and now we're integrating from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus y squared dy which is now given as a square root of pi multiply that by the the two divided by a and this is the solution that we get and ultimately by basically rearranging all the terms um, i'm ultimately left with something like that two divided by pi a squared to the power one divided by four e to the minus x squared divided by a squared and e to the i k not x Right? And finally, this is what we now call our wave packet. Okay? Doing all the Fourier transform, calculating the integrals, rearranging the arguments, and this is what we get. Now after that, I can now know that this is normalized because if I were to carry out the normalizing conditions, I will know that that's normalized. And it's quite obvious, as you can see, now we got already got the normalizing constants over here. Now as you can see that previously, we had something like the normalizing constant as a, uh, a squared divided by pi divided by 2 but then now because the argument has changed to in terms of x the normalizing constant also changes respectively now if i were to draw this out the probability density of this i will get something like that all right as you can see centered at x equals to zero if you if you were to draw the the probability density and this is good because now i can say that this is normalized it's set towards zero Technically, it's what we call it's a oscillating wave with the wave number k naughts. As you can see, the k naught is over here, uh, and modulated by the Gaussian wave packet and centered at the origin x equals to zero. I also want to draw to your attention that now notice that we say that the wave number is k naught as opposed to the wave number being k, because when we say that the wave number is k, there's all these solutions that we can pick to get the plane waves and then you know to carry out the Fourier transform but then now since we use the Gaussian wave packet which was initially centered at k0 this k0 now becomes our wave number for our wave packet to represent the free particle okay and later what we want to try to do is just an example find the find the probability of finding the particle in the region of minus a divided by 2 to a divided by 2 is given by taking the magnitude of this squaring that You'll get something like that, and then when we make the substitution and we we'll carry out the, the integration appropriately, I would think it's we will get a square root of 2 pi divided by a squared. We'll integrate from minus 1 to 1. It'll be e minus 2z squared divided by a squared. This is dz, sorry, yeah, no, no, minus 
uh, two z squared and I'll integrate with respect to z and then when I do that I will get a two divided by three and then that looks quite right because now I can say that the probability of finding the particle from minus a divided by two to a divided by two is given by two divided by three and as you can see, we don't have that idea of probably doing 4, 7, or 11 because we know that now it's normalized and then this is our wave packet that we, that we can use to represent the free particle, right? So this, like I said, is going the whole process of doing the Fourier transform and getting the wave packet, which we now say is a physical solution to the problem of the free particle.